Today we're going over the operation and the testing of a base pan heater in a mini split heat pump system. Make sure to check out our new book on inverter mini splits and we go over the electrical operation of all the components inside. We go over the refrigerant related practices and a lot of the questions that you may have concerning these systems. So check this out in the full outline over at acservicetech.com in the mini split tab. Here we have our Cooper and Hunter outdoor inverter mini split heat pump unit and the job of a heat pump is to absorb heat from the outdoor air. But we have a problem. We have the humidity in the outdoor air as the problem and that outdoor humidity is going to get attracted onto that low temperature coil during the middle of winter and it's gonna get attracted to that low temperature coil because there's low temperature refrigerant that needs to be lower in temperature than the outdoor air. So it's gonna get attracted to the coil, it's going to freeze onto that coil, and it's just gonna accumulate more and more frost on there. And so this system needs to run a defrost mode, which is gonna reverse the refrigerant cycle. And so then that's when that ice or frost is gonna melt, drip down into the base pan of this unit. Well, we have the base pan heater down there in order to keep the condensate now that is forming, as you can see right here, it keeps it in liquid form. So whenever the base pan heater, it's just an electric resistance heater, whenever that's powered, it's gonna keep the water in the liquid state until it drains away from the outdoor unit. And so that may occur if there's a long run time for the system, it may turn on for say five minutes during that long run time. It's gonna also turn on uh, during defrost if the outdoor temperature is low. So if it's low enough for that water to refreeze, that base pan heater is going to keep it in liquid form until it drains away from the unit. As well, it may stay on after defrost is done just in order to make sure that the liquid has time to drain away from the system. So it's not only when defrost is occurring, but usually after defrost is occurring as well. And it has to do with the programming in the main brain of the system, which is the outdoor unit PCB. That's a printed circuit board. And so that's when that may be powered and it's going to be powered the base pan heater will be powered down here it's down in the base pan here and if a system runs for a long period of time and has to run into defrost again the system may make a decision to run the base pan heater so basically it's turning it on and heating up any liquid that's down there in preparation for defrost to occur again and so it just wants to make sure that any water that's dripping down does not drip down onto ice. And then basically you're just going to have this solid block of ice coming up, up into that outdoor unit fan. And then the fan's going to get stuck and that's not going to work. And so you got to remember that frost, the problem with it is it acts as an insulator for the refrigerant to absorb heat from the outdoor air. It's not going to allow it to properly transfer that heat. And so that's why defrost must occur to melt any frost any ice from that outdoor coil and the base pan heater is just there in order to keep that condensate in liquid form until it drains away from the system. If this unit is rated to work with 240 volt power, then the base pan heater is typically supplied with a 240 volt power. It's just that the PCB is making decisions on when to switch on and off power to that base pan heater. If this is a 120 volt unit, then you're typically gonna have a 120 volt base pan heater, but you're just gonna check with your manufacturer in order to verify that. Now we're gonna go and do some testing on the base pan heater itself. Normally you're gonna do your testing in the electrical compartment over here, but for the sake of this video, I've removed the fan blade and we're gonna do our testing down low by the base pan heater itself. In the electrical compartment up high, you'd have your main PCB, you'd have your connectors, and you can just disconnect it right here and take your electrical resistance readings for your base pan heater, and also you would have your ground wire as well. So that's what you see right back here. I've slid this rubber protector from down here up to here. You can see that this one still has the zip tie on. I just wanted to show you what it looks like because you have a, a sealed rubber connection right here because you may have a lot of water and moisture in this location and this needs to be protected in order to go from the electrical resistance wire to the actual copper wire itself. So that's all rubber insulated right here where the connection point is. Also, you see that you have a ground clamp right here and so this wire should have no resistance with this one right here. So there should be no continuity whatsoever. You can see that our multimeter is set on electrical resistance and we're gonna to check to see if we have any resistance whatsoever between this wire and the ground. And so you can see that we're reading OL, which means open line. So we have no electrical resistance at these two wires. So you shouldn't have any at all, but between our two 
wires that connect to the resistance heater over here, we should have some electrical resistance. And in this case, you see we have 351.8 ohms of electrical resistance. And so that is intact and good. If this was bad, you would see either this reading in kilo ohms or you'd see OL. Uh, if these wires were shorted, you'd see 0.0, .0 ohms, which all indicate that you have a bad electrical resistance heater. The other thing is you could have some of your wiring is chafed or something like that where it, where it comes through into the electrical compartment where the main PCB is located. So in this case, our electric resistance heater is intact and good. And so you know this base paint heater is rated to be powered with 240 volts anytime the main PCB turns the power on to these wires here. So remember that we would do our testing right up here in the electrical compartment and also make sure to check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. So this book is available over the website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. We have the full outline so you can tell all the different components that it covers, all the testing, all the procedures to get a system ready for refrigerant, all the electrical connections, all that stuff as well as the service procedures. So make sure to check that out and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.